Hi, my name is James Carter. I'd like to welcome you to the James Carter Studio. We're in Pensacola, Florida. We offer two, three, and five day workshops for beginning students as well as advanced. And today I'm going to give a demonstration on one of our beginning projects, which is a ring project. So without any further ado, uh, let's get to it. I have two pieces of 20 gauge sterling silver plate cut in about one inch squares. I have a band, a sterling silver band that I've already textured and I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solder these two ends together. Very simple. The solder comes in three types, hard, medium, and easy. Since we're going to be using three or four solder joints on this ring, I always start with hard so that I don't remelt any joints that I've uh, already soldered when I go to a subsequent uh, soldering technique. After I've sanded it down, both sides have to be perfectly flat and flush. I take my tripod and my one, my one inch square piece of sterling and lay it on the tripod and flux it. Once again, I flux the ring and lay it right on top. Why do you flux all the pieces, James? Flux acts as a, it keeps oxygen from getting to where the solder joint's going to run. If you don't use flux, oxygen will be there and solder will not flow if there's any, if there's uh, any kind of oxygen where the joint wants to be. How do you know when you're done soldering? Thank you. <laughs> uh, when you see it flow you'll see a really nice bright line just zip around. Can you overdo it? Uh, I've seen some people overdo it because once it flows they just want to keep the torch on it. That's it. That's all you need. It's done. What do you mean by over soldering? Then you get a, a clunk of a big pile of metal, molten metal. Oh. <laughs> it's, called, it's called nugget jewelry. <laughs> Can a beginning student make a ring like that? Absolutely. This is a beginning project. How long will it take? This is a three-day course because sometimes we, it includes setting a gemstone on it, doing some riveting, uh, doing some piercing on it. It goes into different variations, but some students can do it in two days. Some students will make two rings in three days. Uh, it's, you, can, it's, you work at your own speed, but you will finish this ring in the three-day time allotted. I think it's very important that students finish a piece of jewelry and take it home with them. If you uh, take a workshop, we supply all the tools here at the school, uh, unless of course you have your own tools, which is always great. But each bench is equipped with, with uh, you have a light, you have a workbench. Every bench has its own little torch. Every bench has its own Fordham handpiece, so you don't have to wait in line to go do a, pro do a process. I've taken the ring and I've put plates all the way around it and I've oxidized with a liver of sulfur and I've cleaned it up with a brass brush. I haven't touched anything with a polisher. I haven't, it's all been done right here, hand polished. The inside of the ring will be cleaned up a little bit more. That's, that's the variation of this ring. There's so many things you can do. You could take the same ring and put rivets in it and solder them from the inside and have dots all the, all the way around it. Another variation is you can take that same textured ring and, and solder chips, squares, triangles, whatever size you want, solder those onto the surface of it. And a third variation is you might want to just do a silver on silver rivet like this or you can have that as the back turn it around and you can mount a gemstone on the front of it. So the basic band is just your departure point to a, a, whole, a whole lot of different directions you can go with this project.